Online, you'll see all sorts of things being called a cryptid, from Bigfoot to Mothman to Wendigos and the Rake. It can get confusing, so let's look at what is and isn't a cryptid. Cryptid is sort of a spin-off word of cryptozoology, which means the study of hidden animals. In 1974, Bernard Huvelmans, who's one of the founders of cryptozoology, defined it as the study of animal species whose existence hasn't yet been officially recognized due to a lack of specimens or physical evidence. Cryptids can be best split into three main categories. There are unknown animals, surviving extinct animals, and out-of-place animals. Unknown animals are pretty self-explanatory. It's any sighting of a new species or subspecies that's not recognized by science. For example, you have Mongolian deathworms, Bigfoot, sea serpents, etc. Some cryptozoologists also consider large versions of animals cryptids. For example, sightings of squids or snakes that are larger than what science currently believes they grow to would be considered cryptids. Next, you have surviving extinct animals or late surviving animals. These are animals that are recognized by science, but are also officially said to be extinct. Since science doesn't recognize them as currently existing, they're cryptids. Some examples include the thylacine, ivory-billed woodpeckers, and mammoths. Now there can be some confusion with these since some cryptids can double as unknown animals and surviving extinct animals. For example, some people believe that Bigfoot is a descendant of Gigantopithecus, while others think it's a new species entirely. Interestingly, Bernard Huvelmans didn't really include extinct animals as cryptids at first, at least recently extinct ones. You see, when Huvelmans really started out with cryptozoology in the 1950s, a lot of the surviving extinct animals like the thylacine had only recently had their last official sighting. In fact, the IUCN, an organization that tracks endangered and extinct animals, didn't declare the thylacine extinct until 1982. A lot of scientific organizations like the IUCN wait a while after the last sighting of an animal before declaring it extinct. Even 70 years after the last confirmed sighting of the ivory-billed woodpecker, some organizations still didn't declare it extinct. Huvelmans felt that recently extinct animals weren't good candidates for cryptozoology for a few reasons. One, there were a lot of animals recently declared extinct, so keeping track of every newly declared extinct animal that had a sighting would be difficult. Two, mainstream zoology already had a lot of people looking for the thylacine, so that wasn't a pressing issue. Third, Huvelmans felt that declaring animals extinct so soon after they were last sighted wasn't a good scientific practice. Even at the time, however, most people disagreed with his stance on recently extinct animals being cryptids. Today, the vast majority of cryptozoologists recognize possible surviving extinct animals as a part of cryptozoology. Out-of-place animals, or distribution anomalies, are animals that are sighted outside of where they're recognized as living. For example, there are settings of big cats in the United Kingdom and Australia, where no known big cat species are said to live. Since these sightings fall outside of the scientifically recognized range of big cats, they're cryptids. Now we get to the debated section, aliens and paranormal creatures. Aliens are pretty self-explanatory, they're extraterrestrial life allegedly spotted on Earth. A lot of popular sightings of strange beings, like the Flatwoods Monster and Kelly Hopkinsville Goblins, are thought to be aliens due to them being sighted around the same time as strange lights in the sky. There are also some theories that cryptids like Bigfoot and the Chupacabra are also extraterrestrial life, though these interpretations aren't as popular. Proponents of aliens being considered cryptids think that they should count since they're technically animals that science doesn't recognize, whether or not they came from Earth. People who think that they shouldn't count as cryptids point to the fact that cryptozoology was established as the study of Earth's animal kingdom, not the entire universe's. Some people also find aliens visiting Earth to be a lot more unbelievable than a thylacine or giant fish, so they don't want aliens to be considered cryptids since it would make cryptozoology look bad. The majority of scientifically trained cryptozoologists don't consider aliens cryptids. Paranormal animals, sometimes called zooform, are paranormal beings that resemble animals. Some examples of them are Mothman, Black Dogs or Black Shucks, and the Jersey Devil. All of these have interpretations where they have some sort of paranormal power. Mothman, for example, is said to have predicted the collapse of the Silver Bridge in West Virginia. 
People support paranormal animals being considered cryptids because they're also technically animals that science doesn't recognize. A lot of people also just really like Mothman. People who disagree with them being considered cryptids think that the paranormal is too out there and shouldn't be lumped in with cryptozoology. A lot of the paranormal animals don't make sense biologically either. For example, the Jersey Devil is described as a cross between a kangaroo, a horse, a goat, and a bat. The majority of scientifically trained cryptozoologists don't consider paranormal animals cryptids. Finally, we get to the things that definitely aren't cryptids. The category that gets confused the most often are supernatural humans. Supernatural humans are basically humans that have some sort of supernatural enhancement. For example, ghosts, vampires, and werewolves. Since humans are already scientifically recognized animals, they can't be cryptids. A lot of people consider wendigos and skinwalkers cryptids as well, though they're also not cryptids. Skinwalkers, according to the original stories, are just Navajo witches that can turn into animals. Wendigos are said to be people possessed by an evil spirit after committing the act of gluttony, especially when a human eats another human. Since both are just humans with supernatural abilities, they aren't cryptids. Fearsome critters are a fun set of creatures that were associated with old logging tales. During the late 1800s and early 1900s, logging camps would invent stories of wild animals like trouts with fur and cats with cactus hair. My favorite fearsome critter is Squonk, a sad animal that was said to have cried so much it literally disintegrated and became a river. Fearsome critters were sometimes invented as hazing rituals for new loggers. Loggers would solemnly explain the critter to a new hire and convince them that it was real. Fearsome critters aren't cryptids because, although they're very cool, they're fictional. Anything that's fictional isn't a cryptid since the whole point of cryptozoology is that these animals could be out there. Mythical animals are also not cryptids. A mythical creature by definition isn't real. So mythical animals like a unicorn or a sphinx by definition aren't cryptids. There can be some zoological or cryptozoological overlap with mythical creatures, however, like how some people theorize that unicorns were inspired by rhinos or that dragons were inspired by dinosaur bones. Not every newly discovered animal is a cryptid. In order for something to count as a cryptid, it has to be cited prior to it being scientifically recognized. For example, if a man reports a sighting of a giant monkey, and then years later scientists capture one and confirm its existence, then it would be a cryptid, or a former cryptid. But if a scientist is the first one to find a new species, and confirm its existence, it's not a cryptid. There has to be some sort of period between the first sighting and when the animal is scientifically confirmed for it to count as a former cryptid. This means that when you read about thousands of new animals being discovered every year, those aren't thousands of new cryptids being discovered, just new animals. While some people point to the discovery of new animals as a reason to think that cryptids may still be out there, it doesn't make these newly discovered animals cryptids. Sometimes people mention bizarre humans as cryptids, like the legend of the melon heads, small humans with bulbous heads that attacked people. They aren't cryptids because, like I mentioned in the supernatural human section, humans are scientifically recognized animals. Strange phenomena, like floating glowing lights, aren't cryptids since they aren't animals. Mysterious places, like Atlantis or landmasses that go missing, also aren't animals, so they aren't cryptids. Strange objects and basically anything that isn't a living organism are also not cryptids. Finally, we have fictional creatures and creepypastas. You would think this one would be easy, but there are some reports online of people claiming to see fictional creatures, like the rake or siren heads. These were both created as fictional online stories, so they aren't cryptids. Hopefully this video cleared some things up about cryptozoology for you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you enjoyed this video, check out my Cryptid Iceberg series, which will be linked in the description. It covers hundreds of cryptids from around the world. I'd like to thank Chris for helping me make this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you shared it with someone you think may also enjoy it, and liked and subscribed. If you'd like to support my channel, check out my Patreon, also in the description. 
If you join, you can get access to special rewards, like a map I'm making with all the cryptids in the world. My other social media accounts will also be linked below. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate your support, and I will see you in the next video.